pink spot covered, so it has to go on the highest available one, one which is the brown. Taking the one on the, yes, in the middle. Ah, mm. no, just in. I thought he'd missed it. It certainly looked as if he had for a moment on that line. And he's got a nice, simple black, and of course the red next. Oh dear. Making your point once again, Leslie, there is no such thing as a simple <laughs> shot. No, very true. <laughs> well, it looks as if the 69 break will stand. It also looks as if John Spencer has been let off the hook and put in a good position. What? And Ray Reardon, the man who so rarely misses an easy pot, he's usually the model of consistency. Yes, that was a very unlikely miss for him. And it could have been a fatal one in terms of this match. It yes. Because there's n Six. really for players of this standard, uh, there's nothing difficult on the table now. The brown possibly the top end against the cushion, but the, there's plenty of time for John Spencer to take a winning lead before he needs to consider the brown. Seven. Splendid the way this match has seesawed, Leslie. First Ray Reardon within sight of victory, then John yes, Spencer. Yes, definitely. Uh, this is the, uh, I suppose this is the attraction of snooker, the fact that uh, you're up and down, up and down, and you never know which way it's going. 40. It's a game at which a very average player can beat a very good player on the odd frame or two. 50. Thirty, thirty-three. John Spencer, if he puts down this black, will take the lead. And does so. But really, just the brown that you can see at the top end as we look at it is in a difficult position. The rest are amply potable. A little more. is next after taking the blue left himself a very very simple 28 red and of course another blue to follow unless he's coming down the table I'm going to try the pink, I think. He's got to look at that one remaining red to the left as we look at it. He's 11 in front, so there's, there's nothing to spare. No, he now, can make very sure, and this is uh, Now, this is, I pot. would say, a very, very vital putt. Uh, pot, um, this one is definitely... Uh, if he misses this, pot. he could well let Ray Rian in for victory. Yes. A most crucial pot. Done it. <laughs> the crowd knew it. Golden opportunity now. Yes, that was a crossroads. And John Spencer has negotiated it. He's looking at the scoreboard, in fact, and working it out. John Spencer knows exactly what he has to do. He's left himself a little bit straight He's on 25 this in front, but of course there's more than 25 on the table at the moment. 27 in front and 27... 25 left Yes, he's taken the first colour, so there's 25 left. Ray Ridden, if he can get back on the table, now needs at least one snooker in all the colours. 
Down goes the green. Now this is the hard one. This is a hard one. One snooker will still be required at least by well, Ray Reardon. He can afford to roll this slowly over the pocket. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd loved that. It's really been a magnificently atmospheric final this here at Cook's Working Men's Club. And the players are joining in the spirit of this thing. It's it, uh, a most light-hearted and skillful final. So he needs snookers, does Ray? Yes. There's 22 on the table. <laughs> the faces of their fellow professionals, Graham Miles on the right, Cliff Thorburn in the centre. They look more worried than the two oh, players. Oh, he's Keith. gone for one snooker. Sixty-three thirty-three. He's thirty behind, so he needs. I should think at least two. Lovely shot. Very nice swerve there. Beautifully controlled. And Rarian, having set one trap, now has to try to lay another. He's going for it, he's going for it. Well. Oh, sigh of relief from John Spencer. That could have been an in-off. I think there'll be a great roar of acclamation when this final finishes because the s skill and the style and the sportsmanship and the good humour have been magnificent. Oh, he's putting it down. Now, what's the well, thinking? Well, perhaps there, he thinks that uh, he can be get a better snooker off the blue. And, of course, you must remember that. It counts five <laughs> instead of four. Not going to travel. Not quite. Well, I make the score 63 37, which puts. Ah, he's teasing him again, which puts Ray Reardon 26 behind with 18 on the table. He still needs two snookers, yes. Ah. 42, Leslie, I need your mind on this. Uh, Surely it can't be a concession at this stage. No, I, I can't quite see that one. Unless he thought it safer to pot it and get it out He's of the way. He's for it, though, um, <laughs> Leslie. It makes no difference, actually, to the game, except that he's only now two balls to play with. He has, he's got... Oh, look at that swerve. <laughs> really magnificent stuff, a superbly played snooker and a magnificent swerve. This is connoisseur snooker. Not Hard luck. quite. Hard luck. And in fact, John Spencer could play a blinder here and rattle this one down. He'll certainly have a go. Ooh. 
the odds must be on John Spencer, but it would be a fantastic achievement if Ray Reardon could pull this one out of the fire. He's in real trouble, but fighting hard. And the crowd here at Crooks in Sheffield thoroughly enjoying a most enthralling final. Oh. No, he may have left it on. He may well have left just, it on, Leslie. Uh, yes, it just touched the top jaw of the middle pocket. Otherwise, it might have been a snooze. No! <laughs> yes, ripe with potential this situation. Uh, certainly enjoying this. They are. It, it's it's magnificent stuff. Absolutely gripping. Is he going to travel? No. Really? No, he didn't hit weakness. it hard enough. I suppose what really would put the crowd in uproar would be if John Spencer made a foul stroke. Oh, yes. Mm. <laughs> that would really open it up. Yes. Nobody will be more aware of that pitfall than this man. Oh, it's there. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. Wonderful start, Very a wonderful shot. finish. A great final and a great finish. Well, we have been spellbound. You've not given anything the same attention all week as you have to that. It was brilliant. It's proper snooker, as you proper said, wasn't it? You know, in a working men's club, everyone's smoking and drinking. Mm -hmm. Great stuff. Having a lovely time. Having a great uh, time, yeah. You were loving that, Alan. Alan, back into our uh, studio, especially to enjoy that one. It was good. Oh, it was brilliant. Uh, wh what was Magnum P.I. doing? There? Or was it Cliff Thorne? <laughs> I don't know who it was. And uh, the eagle-eyed amongst you might have seen um, Alex Higgins just Glad sneaking in at the end of the match, coming down the side through the crowd. Um, mm. As I say, we all enjoyed that. So did Ronnie. He, we couldn't get rid of him. He was enjoying watching it as well. He was, look at him, enthralled by it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the um, some of the styles that we, you know took us back. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, nice, nice. Some flares going on. Alex Higgins had a nice white suit with a red tie combo. I do. I just want to say one thing because everyone talks about you know back in the day the pockets were very small and they're big buckets now. Well, they looked enormous pockets on that. <laughs> you fall in that middle. You could fall <laughs> in that middle pocket if you weren't careful. That was one of the brilliant. The Starline table. Yeah, that, Starline, that yeah. was called. You'd see it on the end of it, but you used to pick the ball out the pocket and it would smash against the side. Well, I thought it was lovely to see everybody wearing suited and booted ties yeah. in and my audience to enjoy it. Um, let's l reflect on uh, on tonight's match then, Alan. Uh, mm. What did you make of Ronnie tonight? Yeah, he just once he got into gear, he, he, he just put uh, you know his, his foot to the floor and pulled away. As, as Anthony said in his chat with Phil upstairs, he, um, Ronnie makes you feel like you're not even part of the match at, at times and uh, that's the way it panned out. A bit like the match actually with John last night. Let's have a look at the start of the match because Ronnie himself said he was nervous, wasn't he? He said he, said he felt a little bit edgy the, tonight. Mm. Well, this was a great shot from Anthony. Actually, he couldn't have started better with this because he shapes this all around the table on the black. And this is as good a shot as you'll see all week, I think, Stephen, you, you thought. But th then all of a sudden, Ronnie missed one, didn't he? And, and things changed. I love this shot. Yeah, very aggressive shot. This is what you expect. The perfect angle on the black, right into the absolute meat of the bunch here. Just, just perfectly played. And he, and he he looked like he was going to go on a roll there, and you you know, but this is a really unexpected miss. And from then on, for the, he started yeah. to look a wee bit edgy next for the next couple of frames. I mean, you couldn't make this up really. Thirty in front, and he's self-inflicted. He's given away those five points, knocking oh. the blue in, and he probably should have thought of that really. Mm. Yeah, Anthony would have been feeling good at this point. You know, he, as he said himself, he didn't play that well to be two 0 up, but he accepted a couple of gifts there. It's just a pity he couldn't sustain it after the interval and get into the match but Ronnie was devastating and he's 900th career century that's something yeah, isn't it amazing um, amazing numbers Stephen 775 you know but 900 and he's still going strong isn't he? Yeah. and he could have made two or three more he made two tonight every time he gets in he looks like he's going to make a hundred break he doesn't always do it but even though there was little bits he was ragged in, in spells tonight He's scoring, he's devastating in, in amongst them, Stephen, isn't he? Uh, yeah, and, and what he does at the end, he does it better than anyone, um, finishing matches off. Mm -hmm. He just gets the slightest half chance in the frame he needs to win the match, and he just takes it every time. So we don't know who he's going to be playing. It'll either be Sean Murphy or Luca Brassell. That's going mm -hmm. to be a, you know, a really interesting semi-final tomorrow night, isn't it? I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be, I think, attack and snooker. It's going to be long pots, it's going to be big breaks. Uh, like Ronnie even said, it's very hard to pick a winner. Yes, and I think if you look at it from even the match tonight's point of view, the winner, I think at the moment, 
where their careers are going. Luca Brussel has got slightly more chance of beating Ronnie than Sean Murphy, who's never got, never done well against O'Sullivan, and he's and Luca's beaten him already this season. So, you know, if he was to get to the final, he could win this whole thing. You know, Luca. That'd be something, wouldn't it? And Belgium, would, 22 uh, years old, playing with his second cue. Mm -hmm. It'll be a great final regardless of the result tomorrow, but mm -hmm. uh, I think, uh, you know, that this one's been 6-2 uh, a canter in the end tonight. Tomorrow's going to be a close game, I think. What have you enjoyed most this week, Alan? What have you, who's, who's stood out for you? Luca, actually. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I obviously I'm on the circuit and I see him regularly playing, and I knew coming in this week he was he's a different player, um, as he's proven, and, and um, he, he looks like he's going to trouble any player in the game. He could beat O'Sullivan in the final. He's playing that well right now. Well, sadly, you'll not be with us because you're no. off to China yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, uh, Playing sure uh, next week, mm -hmm. uh, first up, I think, against the Spaceman. So, um, thank you yeah. for um, back to work. joining us. Back to, back, to, back to the day job. <laughs> but uh, we thank you very much indeed for all your your observations this Pleasure. week and your input. And we wish you all the very best next week. Pleasure, thank uh, you. Just a reminder of tomorrow, we are back on at... Uh, 6.45, ITV4, Sean Murphy against Luca Brussel. And before the fellas go, I'm going to ask them for a prediction. Alan? Just Luca tomorrow. Just Luca tomorrow? Luca, just a really exciting match, two great players. Um, I really find it hard to pick a winner this, uh, but I'm going to have to say, just on previous form this week, Luca. Looking forward to that one. That will be our uh, lineup for the final. We know Ronnie O'Sullivan safely into Sandy's final at the Champion of Champions after a superb performance tonight. Who will be joining him? Join us at 6.45 to find out. Bye for now.